get started, log into ClassLink and click on your Canva app. Once you click on your Canva app, you will be directed to your home page. From your home page, up here on the top, check in this dropdown that you are logged in with your school site or your staff and admin account. If you are on a personal account, you can click on this dropdown and pick the correct account. To start your whiteboard, look down here at these icons and click on the one that says whiteboard create new. Okay, so now we have a brand new whiteboard open. Before we get started, let's get familiar with the canvas. This is an infinite canvas and you will use the zoom in and zoom out tool at the bottom to zoom in and out and see more or less of your canvas. You will know you're on a whiteboard page and not a presentation page because you will see the dots in the background. You can also use this grid view to see which page you're on or add multiple whiteboard pages. To get back to your whiteboard, double click and you will be back at your whiteboard page. To move around, you can use two fingers on your trackpad, or you can hold down the space bar, and your hand select tool can drag your board from side to side, up or down. Some other features that you will notice on this page, you have a timer down here at the bottom that you can start and stop at any time. You can also take notes for each page, and up here on the top toolbar, you can name your whiteboard. Over here on the top, you will have your file, which is where you can also name your whiteboard, or you can check your version history, make a copy, and save. Now let's look at the tools. First over here on the left, you will find your navigation bar, where you can move between tools. Let's start by going down to draw. In the draw feature, you will notice you have a pen, a marker, a highlighter, an eraser. You have your select tool, and this is your color palette where you can change your colors. So if I use the pen tool and I write on here, I can then use the select tool and select all of that word, change the color after I've already written it, and I can even group that word together and resize it and move it around the canvas. You can use the tilting to tilt and move. We also have the marker and I can change the color before I write as well. If you notice you're writing and it's way too big, you can use your eraser here and quickly erase. And come down here to the settings where you can change the thickness of your marker and also the transparency level of your marker. So we can go to a thinner marker and then start writing again. Use the select tool to click and group or drag along the canvas. When you click on your highlighter tool, you can also change the weight and highlight across your words. To get back to another tool, let's go over here to the navigation menu again. And this time we're going to the text tool. Clicking on text, you can add a text box and type what you need. After you're done typing, you can resize your words and move them to where you need them. You can also use font pairings that have already been selected in here for you. If you choose a font pairing, double click to get into the words and change what they say. You can drag the boxes from the sides to reshape or from the corners to resize. The next tool we're going to go over is in Elements, Sticky Notes, and your whiteboard graphics are exclusive to whiteboards. So let's jump in and take a look at those. Okay, so on this whiteboard, we're going to have students drop sticky notes for what is their favorite subject. Going over to the Elements, you can select a sticky note from here and drag to where you would like it on the page. Another way to add a sticky note would be to click on one that already exists and click on the quick flow to add a sticky note going in an empty space nearby. And see how those sticky notes are adding as I'm clicking on the plus signs. You can also drag the sticky notes around and place them as you need to. 
Another quick way, hot tip here, for how to add a sticky note is to click the letter S on your keyboard and a sticky note will pop up. To write on the sticky notes, double click and you can start typing. Sticky notes have authorship, which means when a student types onto the sticky note, their name will appear at the bottom. After sticky notes have been added, you can add reactions by clicking on a sticky note that is already on the page and going up to this emoji, which is your reactions. Add one of these five reactions or add one of your own. Now that we've added some sticky notes, let's look at how to add lines and lines with text. So coming over here to the elements, I'm going to just add a simple line and drag the line where I would like it. You'll notice you have a toolbar up here at the top and you can add arrows to your lines, points, or leave it as a straight line with nothing. You can also change the line type by keeping it straight or adding elbows or even adding curves. If you add those elbows, when you move the line, the elbows will shift and adjust for you. Let's make a box here for another section. So we're going to add a square shape, make the shape the size that we would like to give our students a nice working space. And then we can change the color and the outline. And now you have a working space. To lock this box or any elements in place, simply click on the element, go to your three dots, and you can lock. Now this will stay put, and you can add sticky notes or elements right on top. Even after you've added a line and connected it, you can change how it is connected by clicking and dragging. To add words on this line, simply double click, and now you can add some text linking the two boxes. You can highlight that text and change the font size or even the font itself and the color. Over here in your elements, you also have whiteboard graphics. Go ahead and click see all to expand and see the full library of stickers. Click on any of the stickers to add it to your page and now drag where you would like it to go. Stickers are also customizable by changing the colors up here at the top, resizing from the corners. These can also be locked in place so that they cannot be moved. If you are looking for an element to add to your whiteboard and you're not sure where to find it, you can also click the forward slash on your keyboard, and that is a shortcut to get to the search feature. Another great way to use whiteboards is to put videos directly into your whiteboard for your students to watch before they move on with an interactive activity. For this activity, I have grabbed an Edpuzzle lesson Simply copy and paste that URL right onto the page. It will embed it right into this whiteboard. Now your students can click play and watch the video and interact right here from the whiteboard. You'll see if they hover, they will just double click to interact and start the lesson. Once they are done with the lesson, they can then move over to the next part of their activity. For other types of embeds, you can come over to the nav navigation bar and click on apps for embeds, and you can always paste your link here and then click add to design. Any URL can be embedded right into your whiteboard. Students can use the built-in tools to add fun embeds from emojis. Students can also come to the elements and use the photos and videos and even audio to add content into the whiteboard. Simply click on see all, search for a video that you are looking for, click one time to add it right here into the whiteboard and resize and move around. You'll see in elements you also have frames which pictures can be added to by dragging over top and then being resized. Simply grab a different photo and drag over top to replace what's in the frame. 
Once you come back to the elements bar, you will see all of your recently used elements will be right up at the top, just above your sticky. To leave a comment on any item, simply click on the item and you will see this comment icon. Click on the comment icon and add your comment. Click the purple arrow to submit your comment. Now you will see the comment bubble right here. Others can click on that comment and reply and add with the purple arrow. You can also mention somebody by clicking on the at symbol, clicking on that purple arrow again. We can add emojis right here in the comments and also stickers in the comments. Once all the comments have been read, simply X out to minimize. You will notice there are multiple comment bubbles on this page. To view all comments, come up here to the top toolbar and click on your comment icon and you will be able to go through the different comments. You notice as I scroll over them, it will show me where that comment is listed on the page. Simply click on this check to resolve the comment that is there. To share your whiteboard, come up to the top toolbar and click on share. You can type the name of people or classes right in here. And then you can change co the collaboration level by clicking on people you have given access to or anybody with the link and then change to view, comment, or edit. If you would like all participants to have editing access and be able to add to the whiteboard, then make sure you change this to can edit. If you do not want others to change or add to the whiteboard, but you would like them to be able to leave comments, then click on can comment. And if this is for viewing purposes only, then you would change it to view. This is one we have students collaborating on, so we will make sure it says can edit. If you choose not to add students' names up here, then you can simply copy the link and send it to your students through Google Classroom, chat, email, any way that you share links, even GoGuardian. We can also assign this to students by coming down to the assignment icon, assign this through Canva or Google Classroom, in which case students will each get their, new, their own design. This would not be a collaborative whiteboard, but all students would have their own whiteboard to work on separately. Another quick way to add one or two members to your whiteboard would be to click on this plus sign and add names directly in here and then share the design. Make sure you set the permissions over here on the side and then share the design. If you would like to present your whiteboard, you can come down here to the bottom, click on these arrows and it will expand and present to full page. As students add to the whiteboard, your presentation will reflect all additions in real time. So this can be presented on the whiteboard for your class. And as students are adding information, it will populate on the presented copy. To change pages on your presentation, you can use the arrows down here on the bottom left. And you can also use your presentation magic shortcuts where we can blur the screen and come back by using these simple magic shortcuts. So we're going to use O to make bubbles and D give a drum roll and C will give confetti. Just some fun things for your presentation. To exit your presentation, you can click escape or click on those double arrows again and you are back to your editable document. If at any time you need to get rid of this toolbar on the left, just hover and this X will pop up and you can close those toolbars. Once you have shared your whiteboard, you can change your sharing status from editing to viewing and instantly the link will change for any students who have it. This is a great way to have students collaborating and then closing it down when class is over. The next day you can always come back and open editing again. When you are all done with your whiteboard, simply X out and this will be saved in your Canva recent design. Once you are back at your Canva homepage, you will notice in your recent designs, there is the whiteboard that you were just working on. 
go ahead and click on this star to add it over on the left to your starred projects to find quickly. Clicking on the three dots will allow you to change the name, make a copy, open in a new tab, or even save to a folder. Teachers can also copy to another team if you would like this whiteboard on multiple teams or also in your personal account.